Three cheap dividend stocks to buy now. As always, we'll analyze their historical performance. We'll discuss their dividend safety. We'll look at some of their financial metrics. And as always, we'll run them through the valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value, getting to our acceptable buy price, given that investor margin of safety. And we'll look to Wall Street to see what they're forecasting for the next 12 months. Jumping into stock number one, we have the Kroger company. Now they are up 14% over the last year, currently trading towards the upper end of the 52 week range with a yield of 2.34% and a forward P of just under 11. Now, if this is a company you have been holding over the last 10 years, you would be up 125%. Bear in mind, it doesn't include dividends reinvested, and we can see their all-time highs April 22 at $62. So let's take a look at this company. Dividend safety score 71. It is safe. Market cap 36 billion. We're talking about a large cap company. Key metrics. Now, if you do see a recession in 2024, well, during the last one, Kroger increased their dividend. They had above average growth at negative 1% versus the S&P's negative 12. And they also significantly outperformed the S&P negative 31 versus the S&P's negative 55. On top of that, double digit dividend growth last summer, June 23, double digit dividend growth over the last five years, Double digit dividend growth over the last 10 years, looking very strong as a dividend growth company. And they have been increasing those dividends for the last 16 years. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, for those that are new to the channel, dividend yield theory states the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average 2.35 versus 2.19. So we have a sign here. We also have a sign on the forward P sitting at 11.1 below that five year average of 12. So a double signal of undervaluation. Do bear in mind though, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. Consumer staples sector P also sits much higher at 20.3. Now, free cash flow payout. Remember on this channel, that is what we draw your attention to. Earnings data though, is always available here if you do prefer it. For me, it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. So I focus on the free cash flow and I want to see below 60% because then it gives me faith like Kroger typically do. It means that they can offer those double digit dividend increases. Now, typically for Kroger, their dividend free cash flow payout is below 30%. Although we do know in 2023, it went up to 50%. Still, they offered that double digit dividend increase. 2024 it is expected to come down to 31%. So I shouldn't be surprised or no one should be surprised if we see another strong and consistent double digit increase to their dividend. Free cash flow per share, pretty inconsistent, although long term it is moving in the right direction. 121 in 2014, just under $2 in 2023. 2024, they are expecting to see massive growth to that free cash flow, which is a very positive side. And as we can see on the longer term, it is moving in that right direction. Now, sales growth, what we analyze on the channel, we see top line growth steady to moderate for mature companies. We want to see around 3 to 7%. With Kroger, what we are seeing is pretty strong year on year around that 3 to 7% level, although fairly inconsistent. 2019 to 2020 was a pretty poor period for that company. Since then, they have essentially rebounded very nicely, 4 to 8% growth over the last three years. Numerically speaking, then, they have grown that top line essentially by 50% over the last 10 years, going from just under 100 billion to 148 in the more recent year. Shares outstanding. Now, we love this as investors when companies do share buybacks. They have reduced it from 1.04 billion to 725 million, and that is some consistent buybacks over the last few years. Very, very strong buying back around 30% of those shares in 2014. And essentially, they are returning those excess cash to investor pockets by increasing the pie in which you own a company. Now, ROIC, return on invested capital, one of my seven golden dividend metrics. What I'm looking for here is a minimum of 10% personally. Gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And over the long term, we see it is pretty much over that 10%. In the more recent year, 14% looking very strong. Operating margin and free cash flow margin. Now, this is one area that we do see a lack for Kroger. We know that it's between 2 to 3% over the last 10 years. Now, they have been pretty strong as a company in terms of their operational efficiencies. So around that 3% level isn't anything to worry about right now. 
However, one thing I would say is that if we do end up in a very, very large recession and we do see companies or in fact consumers more so being restricted in what they can afford, companies like Kroger may start to reduce some of their margins on their products and this could ultimately affect this margin that we see here. So again, something just to keep an eye on quarter on quarter, year on year. Free cash flow margin, pretty much a very similar story. What we want to see here is really above that 5% level. Net debt to EBITDA looking positive. This is their earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. This ultimately shows us two things, the balance sheet strength and the dividend safety. What we're looking for here below three. Now, these are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt, essentially net of cash on hand. 3.72, pretty high in 2019, above our three level. Since then, it has been coming down pretty strongly. 2023 at 2.22. 2024 expected at 2.12, looking very strong in terms of their balance sheet and the dividend. So this is quite a strong metric for Kroger. Now, in terms of their valuation, and as always, if you are enjoying the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically on the channel, we do run through every single one of these models to get to the intrinsic value. For today's episode, let's jump straight into that calculation. And for Kroger, in today's episode, it arrives at around $54. Now, with the current price around the $49 mark, we typically start off with a margin of safety of 10%, and we use that if we believe it meets three criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. Now, for Kroger, we can see it isn't too far off, under a dollar away from being a 10% margin of safety. So based on our estimates and judgments, that's what we're seeing right now with this company. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast over the next 12 months, they have a price target of $53, so they see upside of around 7%. Now, before we move on to the next stock, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to grab a copy of this, as well as having access to other articles, all completely free, click on that pinned comment below. Now, one company that we haven't reviewed on the channel in some time, Stanley Black & Decker. Now, this is up around 7% over the last year. Over the last 10 years, however, it is up only 8%. Not the greatest, even when you consider it doesn't include those dividends reinvested. And we can see its all-time high sitting around $220 in May 2021. And it has come down significantly over the period. Now, it is currently trading in the midpoint of the 52-week range and does offer a nice yield of 3.63% with a forward P of around 21.7%. Dividend safety score 80, it does look to be safe. Market cap just under 14 billion, a large cap company. Recessionary metrics then, well, they increased the dividend during the last recession around the average growth at negative 17, and they had roughly an S&P return negative 58%. Dividend growth, very poor in July 23. Remember, on this channel, we want to see a minimum of 4%. It's always what we advocate, so you're at least keeping up in line with inflation. Over the last five years, they have done that at the 5% level. Over the last 20 years, at 6%, looking fairly strong. Now, in terms of status, they are a dividend king. Not only have they increased those dividends for the last 50 years or more, but they have been paying a dividend for 147 years without a reduction, an absolutely insane feat to note. They also have a undervaluation signal on dividend yield theory, 3.63, much lower than the five-year average of two, although we do note the forward PE sits slightly higher than the five-year average of 18.9, and it is also above the industrial sector PE of 19.5. Now, in terms of the free cash flow payout, looking fairly inconsistent. Remember, we want to see below 60%. 2023 at 57%. Now, this isn't too bad, but we did see a very mediocre dividend increase. 2024 is expected to go higher to 68%. So I would say don't expect a massive increase to the dividend this year. I would say at a maximum 5%, but probably around the level we saw last summer. In terms of the free cash flow per share, well, we do in fact see it has been decreasing over the longer term. We see 6.44 in 2014, 5.70 in 2023, 2024 expected to go slightly lower as well. Now, just because the free cash flow per share is dropping, it doesn't necessarily mean it isn't a strong buy. You also have to look at the valuation and set your expectations, and we'll discuss that during the valuation. 
sales growth remember steady moderate growth three to seven percent it has pretty much got that for most of the years but we do see some years of negative growth in fact the more recent year negative seven percent isn't really what we want to see especially considering inflation around that four percent on average so you have to wonder whether overall they are in keep keeping up with inflation in real terms numerically though 11 billion to 16 billion and what we can see is over the longer term they've done share buybacks and they've issued shares although we do see a net position of share buybacks going from 160 million shares outstanding to 150. ROIC now it has started to decrease over the longer term 4% in 2023 and ideally what we want to be seeing here is this is being set as a bottom and in 2024 and beyond it start to increase and that will hopefully also show through the share price return as well but again this does mean you have to be bullish on this sector as a whole as well as Stanley Black & Decker as a company. Operating margin, well, up to 2021, looking positive. It did start to decrease, so there are some signs that we could see the operational efficiency of the company reducing. But again, something to keep in mind looking at the next quarter and next year's guidance. Free cash flow margin, for the large part, it is around that 5% level that we do want to see as a minimum for the majority of companies. 2023, 5%. Again, maybe something just to keep your eye on. Now, net debt to EBITDA, what we can see too high in my opinion in 2023 but what i do quite like about this is it expected to drop in 2024 to 4.03 and in actual fact the trailing 12 months showing at 4.65 is showing that they are bringing this down so this is looking like a very positive step for this company now in terms of the valuation let's get to the intrinsic value and for today's episode of for stanley decker it is coming to 105 dollars now, what does this mean in terms of margin of safety? Well, 10%, we see a buy up to $95. At 15%, up to 89 pretty much at the current trading price. So we do see a 15% margin of safety. It does really depend on what you are expecting for future growth and whether or not this is enough for you to enter into a position. In terms of Wall Street, they see around 9% upside with a price target of $98 over the next 12 months. And as always, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below whether or not any of these are companies you have been adding over the more recent period. The next company that we are taking a look at is exactly United Parcel Services UPS. Now, this is down 19% over the last year. Over the last 10 years, up around 50%. We do see it peak a few times around that $225 mark. It is currently pretty much heading towards its 52-week lows with a nice starting yield of 4.4% and a forward PE just below 18 Dividend safety score 69, it is safe. Market cap 126 billion, it is a mega cap company. And when we look at those recessionary metrics, well, they maintained the dividend during the last recession. They had average growth, but they did very slightly outperform the SMP. Dividend growth, I mean, this is something just to laugh at, 0.6%. They did this purely just to keep up with their dividend increases year on year. Remember, you want a minimum of 4%. Although what makes it worse is that over the last five years and the last 20 years, we did see strong double-digit dividend growth. Over the last period, we do see, in fact, 14 years of consecutive increases with 25 years of paying a dividend without a reduction. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, we have a massive sign of undervaluation, 4.42 versus the 3.34 yield of the five-year average. Although, again, we can see the forward P sitting slightly higher than the five-year average of 16.3. Industrial sector P, though, is slightly higher at 19.5. In terms of the free cash flow payout, now 2023 looking a little bit of a worry, a red flag indicator, given the fact that sitting at 110% means that in 2023 they paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow. And it's always why I say look at the free cash flow over the earnings. You wouldn't be able to gauge that from that 2023 74%. 2024, though, they are expecting to bring that down to around 101%. And this is one that I would say just to keep an eye on for the future to ensure that they can continue to pay those dividend large increases. Free cash flow share, it has been increasing over the last 10 years. And in fact, 2024, they're expecting it to go higher as well. to so $6.46 with a 10% increase. So it is increasing, but just understand the type of companies you're investing in. You know, with tech companies, you have different expectations. With more mature companies and cyclical companies, your expectations change depending on the industry. Sales growth, though, up to 2022, looking fairly positive as an average. 2023, however, negative 9%, a little bit of a worry. But again, these are things you just need to consider when you're looking at your margin of safety, as all companies that are high quality are always a buy if you can get them at the right valuation and you believe in them for the longer term. 
Total sales very strong, 58 billion in 2014, up to 91 in 2023. And we can see, whilst not massively consistent, they have been doing share buybacks. In fact, we also see from 2019 to 2022 where they were issuing shares. But over the longer term, they have reduced those shares by around 64 billion. ROIC looking fairly strong, even though it has been decreasing. 20% in 2023 is a metric I do still like, even though we do see that nature over the last 10 years. Operating margin, it has been straddling around that 12% over the last 10 years, 11% in 2023. Just something to keep an eye on, but so far it isn't something to worry about just yet. Free cash flow margin as well, it is pretty much straddling that 5% over the long term. So again, nothing major to report right now, but there are a few metrics you may just want to keep your eye on. Now, one of the best metrics with the United Parcel Services is that net debt to EBITDA 1.58 in 2023. Expected pretty much the same in 2024, below that three level. So it does look ultimately like the dividend is safe and their balance sheet is fairly strong. So let's jump into their valuation, see whether or not we can see a lot of growth with this company purely on that share price analysis and don't forget you can grab a copy of the valuation model if you want to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or on your watch list by clicking on the pinned comment below and you can also run through these own companies that we've gone through with your own estimates and judgments so a 10 percent margin of safety about up to 155 at 15 percent again around a dollar difference so for ups we see a 15 percent margin of safety in terms of wall street and their expectations well they see around 15 percent upside over the next 12 months they have a price target of 170 dollars so they do see this as a strong buy for future growth as always though do let me know your thoughts in the comments below are you adding kroger stanley or united parcel services into your portfolio or have you been over the last few months as always if you enjoyed today's episode smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button and as always we'll see you on the next one